Item number six, superintendent's presentations. Jonathan. Great. All right. Thank you, board, for allowing us to highlight a few um, items tonight that um, part of the work that we're doing in our district. We have um, three big rocks. Um, at a previous meeting, we were able to highlight rock number one in our work with culture and working with Tim Kite and framing the culture in our district as a foundational rock. And that piece has been um, in works and we've had uh, focus teams working on that and looking at what do we believe as a district and how do we want to live that out? And we talk about our beliefs, our behavior, and our experience that we want to create here in Mason City Schools moving forward. So that's rock number one. Rock number two, big rock number two, is inclusive excellence. And we are um, just so fortunate tonight to have a couple of our administrators to highlight some of the work that we have been doing with inclusive excellence. We also have uh, Tommy Lewis, one of our experts um, that has been working with our district as well, um, here tonight with us. And we're excited to um, have him as well to, to be with us. So rock number two, when we talk about inclusive excellence, just to be clear on the why behind inclusive excellence, as you can see on the screen as we have presented here, um, we do live in a community that's diverse. We live in a community that expects that we are celebrating diversity and that we are embracing equity and justice. And we want to honor that. We want to honor that need in our community and we also want to honor that, um, the richness of what we have here in Mason City Schools and the community that we serve. And so we want our schools to be a safe space for this, for our learners. We want to be, make sure that our learners are seen, they're valued, and they're cared for and respected. Um, so that's part of the why behind the work. And this is, we call these the three big rocks because the three big rocks are not going anywhere. These are the rocks that we have settled on and that we are excited about sustaining and moving forward. And, and so this year we have invested um, intentionally this because we know this is something that's going to be here and you'll hear more about that investment as our um, administrators get to talk a little bit about their experience and the actual efforts and work that are going on behind the scenes and when we talk about inclusive excellence it's a really great term it's a great hashtag but what does it mean and so we want to talk a little bit about that and show you what that means today so it's not just words but it's actions and change we understand that inclusive excellence is work that starts at the heart level and works out from there and so we have um, spent a lot of time thinking about how do we do that intentionally as well. The three areas that we look closely at when we talk about inclusive excellence is celebrating diversity, embracing equity and justice, and living out authentic inclusion. We feel like there is definitely a, a natural continuum and progression there. We understand that people are at different levels and different places throughout our community and in, inside our uh, own staff um, on this process, and we are trying to be responsive and help people along the way as we grow together as a community. So without further ado, I want to invite um, Tracy Carson, and I believe you're going to invite a couple other guests up to talk about the specifics of what's happening throughout the district. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, so one, uh, Jonathan so beautifully talked about, we do live, we are, we are blessed to live in a community that's rich in diversity, and, and that, that, that diversity, who we're made up of, is absolutely inside our schools. Um, and so you can kind of see our, our ethnic makeup there. One of the things that I think people are, are often really surprised about is to know we have 75 different languages that are spoken, spoken by our students and our families. Now that's not just, um, we, we're actually more like 45 for our ESL population, our English language learners. But realizing that the gamut of diversity, the world is here, so when, we, when, when some school districts maybe sometimes struggling to think about how do we prepare students for the world, the world is in Mason, and that is a, that's a wonderful thing for us. We, um, we often know that um, it is about kind of having what our actions are, and so this year we've spent a lot of time trying to be really intentional about how we move forward, and we've decided as a, as a staff, the, the number one thing we can do right now is working on that work as, as our staff. Mm -hmm. And so we've decided um, in looking at how we're gonna grow greatness together here and how we continue to do that, that as Jonathan said, this isn't something that's going away. This big rock is gonna be with us for a long time. So in this year one effort, we're doing a lot of work around, um, around the people who work with our kids. And so our objective is really just simply to deepen the appreciation of diversity and, and our commitment to equity and inclusion. 
Um, and so these are some of the things that we're gonna be measuring and that we know that we've shared that with our board um, and that you all have been in, engaged in that, looking at that conversation and say, what, what is it that we're gonna hold ourselves accountable to? And so some of those things include um, having all of our staff, every single staff member receive um, at least three hours of kind of deep equity and inclusion work that includes um, kind of a full picture of the dimensions of diversity and also uh, diving into kind of understanding what microaggressions are as well. Looking at doing some measurement work on watching how our staff demonstrates greater <coughs> understanding of different backgrounds, um, increasing our staff from underrepresented groups and making sure um, that we're also looking at our own students' data. And we have seen gaps between the way that, for example, our Asian and white students have felt about feeling welcome at school and our black students who felt welcome at school. And we wanna see that close. We want everyone to know that they're welcome and valued in Mason. And so as a part of that, we have been so blessed to have Tommy Lewis with us. Um, you all have received uh, some of the um, training from Tommy as he has had uh, upwards of you know, hundreds and hundreds of our staff members that he's already trained. But I think um, the wonderful thing with, with Tommy and his kind of approach is that he's not new, he's not new to Mason. Um, Tommy started on this journey with us in Mason with our diversity council back in 2004. And it's just been just such a joy to have him kind of helping lead all of us through this work, um, to have kind of someone of his caliber. And so I'll just let him kind of tell a little bit about what he's seen. Again, thank you for allowing me to share with you all work. Um, I, I would like to offer up that uh, of my work and my company's work, Make It Plain Consulting, we see that uh, Mason City Schools is ahead of, the, ahead of the curve in Ohio with regards to its intention uh, to not only ensure that staff administration is aware of their own uh, biases, unconscious or conscious, uh, but educated in the space of diversity and inclusion. Uh, this is not a path that you can learn through osmosis, unfortunately. Uh, this is, has to be an intentional effort. And so uh, one of the uh, things that we've been doing, obviously, with training the staff is to allow them a safe space amongst peers uh, among some other thought leaders and subject matter experts to explore the concepts of equity, diversity, and inclusion, i.e. inclusive excellence. And then uh, also build some strategies, uh, not only individual strategies, but organizational strategies that will meet the needs of the current students and future students. Mm -hmm. I would like to also say that it's providing an environment within the school buildings and across the district for safe spaces for us to be able to reflect with any past experiences that may have created some, some hurt or wounds. And so this is important for healing, and these safe spaces are healing spaces that, not, that, that every citizen, every community in this community, every person in this community uh, has a forum that they can be heard uh, and that their thoughts, <coughs> voice is highly considered, that their truths are their truths. And this is part of the learning. And as we move into the next iterations of learning implementation, uh, I will offer up to the board that we are uh, in a space of real-time adjustments. So when there are items, concepts, ideas that are not working, that have not worked, we're in a position to make that real-time change. That is, in closing, a credit to the district and the size of the district, its nimbleness to change on the dime. And so I'll conclude by saying that I think this is great work that the district and the staff are, are taking and that uh, the voice of the customer, our families, students in particular, are being heard. So thank you for hearing and responding in this vein. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I'm gonna stop and pause, but, but actually, I'll actually go and actually share just a little bit about what some of our staff. So um, the way we've kind of organized our work to order to make it really systemic and really be able to move um, as change is we've, we've organized kind of um, in, in each of our racks um, teams, teams of teams. 
And so we have building focus teams and a central focus team, and then we have a district fusion team. Well, we brought together 68 of those inclusive excellence leaders in our district and did two deep dive, two day deep dive with Tommy that was um, really pr very powerful. And here's just a few. I mean, there were so many incredible comments, but here are a few that I just looked through the training. The two day training with Tommy Lewis was very valuable. He did a wonderful job presenting the information and helping us dig deeper to understand diversity there more. I've been in Mason for 15 years and this was the most valuable training I've attended. The team building for our equity team was amazing and I feel it empowered each of us and created awareness and conversation points for all of us. Um, another open-ended part of our questions that we had, as a result of the training, now I need time to process what I was exposed to during the training, I need more courageous conversations and interactions with folks who are sincere about doing the work. To mindfully and respectfully challenge the microaggressions I hear and see, I need to continue to educate myself on cultural behaviors and boundaries, I appreciate the list of recommended books that were shared at the training. And then simply, I need to get to work, which I love that, because that is the cultural humility that we keep learning about and trying to be better at. And so with that, I'd like to ask um, one of our building focus team leaders from the high school, Amy Hull, to come and just describe a little bit about what we experienced together during that day. Hello, good to be here. Um, so as a part of this training, um, first as a, as a building administrator, it was honestly really just nice to be able to be there um, and for the entire day, for both of those days, to do the work. Um, and so as, as a part of the work that day, um, we first were challenged to, as you heard, dig deeper inside of ourselves, to share a little piece of ourselves, to be vulnerable with one another as a team as well as with the entire group, sorry, with the entire group um, that was present there, which allowed for us to connect with other buildings, um, with other staff from other buildings, which is also nice, which we um, often don't get an opportunity to do. Um, but what was even more important um, from an administrative perspective was the time that we were able to have to spend together to, to allow some of that creativity to flow. Um, you know, so often we are you know, we're, we're seeing what's happening and we're seeing, um, you know, some of the issues and the problems that are coming up, but instead of being able to have the time to work towards solutions, um, we now have that. And, and that's been a really great thing. So one of the things that we were tasked with was making kind of like um, what, I, what I like to call the 90-day the plan <laughs> in my old school of thought. But it's kind of like a, for us at, at our building, it was a semester um, kind of idea and we just sat down and literally brainstormed all of the thoughts and and things that we can do to not just help each other as a team but help the staff so that we can ultimately help the students um, and you know every building is in a different place um, every bu building has a different understanding and has a different progression of the work um, and so I would say it gave us the jump start that we needed to allow those creative juices to flow I'm, I'm really excited about the things that we've come up with um, to start the work at the high school. Um, you know, you can be the first to know. We're thinking about a newsletter every month um, that will highlight a specific staff member's personal story um, so that there's relevance with the subject matter in the newsletter um, that will be culturally appropriate to that particular um, item. We are doing an introductory uh, equity team video for the staff that will be created by students. So they're actually, the students involved are getting to hear those staff stories. Um, and we are also um, offering ourselves as a sounding board to the staff so that if there are things that they want to discuss, things that they are nervous about, you know, we can kind of proactively preempt possibly some of those things that could come up in the classroom. Um, and then the other um, part that we are, are also very excited about um, is, um, I just lost it, <laughs> um, is just building on the relationship with the team together. Um, and so we're, we're meeting regularly. We've decided to meet off-site, which is nice, um, and, and get to know one another and really reach out and um, hit all of those things. I will say personally for me, it has allowed me to build on a passion of mine. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about this topic, about this work, um, because celebrating acceptance of all people 
is so important, whether it is religious, um, racial, ethnic, sexual orientation, all of those things are so important because it, it impacts the health and the safety of our students. Um, and so that, for me, has been a very important part of the work, um, and I'm happy that we're moving. Thank you. Thanks. So um, next, I'd like to ask Eric Messer to come up. One of those things, again, just to reiterate, so those teams of, uh, we've had two days of training with, the, with our focus teams. We'll have another two full days that we're investing in to kind of Tommy investing in us and his team to have us be leaders so that we're continuing to train and learn. And with that, I'd love to have Eric just give us a little um, perspective. Thanks, Tracy. Um, I was lucky enough this morning, we had our inclusive excellence team meeting in our building. And I asked him some of the questions you did. I said, you know, so guys, I'm going to talk at the board meeting tonight. What are, some, what are some words you say that if we describe our two days together with Tommy, what would you say? Powerful. Blessed to, to work alongside Tommy and the MI team. Excited. Love inclusive excellence for all staff and students. One just said, let's do it. Um, inspiring PD for the future of our school. Then one person said, Tommy Lewis opened the door, and then she said, no, 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 no. Tommy Lewis kicked down the door. Let's go in and get the work done. So we're, we're excited. I, I think when, we, when you think of what this is going to impact, if you're a student in Mason City Schools right now, can you stand up real quick? So someone asked me, well, why do you do this work? Right there. Right there. That is why we do this work. Um, I've worked here for 22 years. I'm the old man now. It's kind of amazing to me that I'm the, I'm the old You guys can sit back down. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've worked here for 22 years now. I started um, in this district as a student teacher, and then I was a paraprofessional. I was a fifth grade teacher. I've, I've taught. Um, I was a principal at Mason Heights, closed Mason Heights, Western Row, and MI. And I've seen a lot of changes throughout the years in our district. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited for this work. And I think of, when we think of what Tim Kite has kind of talked to us about, E plus R equals O. Your event plus your response equals your outcome. But we have to change our response to get a different outcome. And that's what I view this as doing. I think of inclusive excellence, we're changing our response for our kids and for our staff. Um, we're very excited to start planning uh, PD for our staff. We plan the hour and a half this morning that we have on October 15th. Uh, we're excited for the, we have more tra training in, in November as well. And uh, it, it can't get any better. You know, I think when the kids are walking in our door, we have a huge influence on in our kids and their thoughts and their beliefs and, and, and how the day's gonna go. You know, when I see up there, I, I saw the stat that you know, we're trying to close that gap on kids feeling welcome. That breaks my heart. So this, this is powerful work for all of us to make sure kids feel welcome, walk into our schools on a daily basis, walk into our classrooms on a daily basis. How's a kid feel welcome? I think back to last year, we, um, we worked with a group of our, of our parents and we had some, they bought us some, some books that had some Muslim um, characters in it. And a little kid walked up to me and said, Mr. Messer, there's a kid who looks like me in this book. And he was so excited. And it just, and it, as a principal, it's like, oh, we need more of that. And so we can, we can continue to work on this, get more and more um, books in our, in our classrooms, and that's some things we're looking at. You know, at MI, we talked about our, our motto at MI is, is MI strong? And I would tell you, with, with inclusive excellence, it will be MI is stronger. So thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. If the board has any questions for any of our folks, maybe I'll ask Eric and Tommy, maybe I'll ask you to come up just in case the board has some questions. That's Tommy. <laughs> I'll go first since I uh, usually get the short end of the stick, but um, you know we're here, and obviously this is there's there's a lot of energy in this room right now, and there's a lot of excitement I hear from from you all, but um, you know this is not obviously the first time we have heard about this training and this program. We, we've been excited to hear the progress since it's began, since the summer and um, or early stages of it. And, you know, so, some of the excitement comes from, you know, uh, Tracy said something about how do we prepare students for the world? Well, the, the world is in Mason. And 
that's the good parts and, and the bad parts sometimes. And I know that this, this training has included, you know, some, some tough conversations for you all. And I guess I just want to say thanks to especially Eric and Amy, but also Tommy for, um, you know, kind of leading and guiding our buildings through those real and tough conversations at times with our staff because, you know, if, if you just keep it all at the surface level and you're just kind of, you know, smiling and holding hands and patting each other on the back, we're, we're not learning and we're not growing. And, um, you know, I just want to say thanks for, for doing that because I know that that can be tough at times, you know, when you have people that you've known for years and maybe you thought you knew them and they share something that, you know, you didn't realize they felt that way or something. That, that can be a tough, you know, test of those relationships you had a long time building up. I, was, I, I have a comment also, um, um, particularly your comment, Tommy, about you can't learn this through osmosis. Um, and I think what I'm hearing, at least what I experienced in your discussion with us, is that um, this is work where you can't see what you don't know what to, to look for. And you've done a very good job of trying to you know, lay out what to look for and be conscious about when you're talking to someone, evaluating something, making a decision. Um, like I said, you, you, you can't see it if you're not shown what to look for. So thank you. I think it's, a, it's one of the brightest points for me to watch this um, training go on in Mason is educators educate children. That's a common thought. It's, a, it's an obvious, but I think it's really great for our students to see that the adults teaching them are also still learning and making a deliberate effort to learn something new or to learn how to do something better. That's what I think is the shining light in this. Kids are seeing their adults learning and getting better at something. So education, it continues on after certainly high school um, and it continues on even in other subject areas other than the classroom, social studies, language arts. So that's, that's what I think is very great about this. You know, one of the most frustrating things about uh, being on the school board is that you see things that you want to change and, and you uh, immediately find yourself very limited in, in what you can do individually. So uh, the one thing that we all do, one of the very few things actually, is we, uh, is we hire and support our superintendent. And so I just want to make a, a point that the three of you wouldn't be up here right now without the tone being set by our leader in the district. And I want to thank Jonathan for setting that tone on a fast pace, getting up to speed. I know I've told you to pace yourself, but in this case, <laughs> you're, uh, you're doing a great job. And we thank you for making this available for all of our teachers, all of our, our students, and then eventually our community to engage in. And so thank you for that. And, and just as a side note, you're still a kid, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you don't get to be the old man yet. So, <laughs> experience, I guess. Yeah, sorry, Tracy, I made you come up because we were, don't really have questions because we've been we've been engaged in, in talking about this. Obviously, Tommy, we've met with you, and we can't wait to finish up that that session. We're talking about dates now. We're so looking forward to spending more time with you ourselves as a board. Um, so. It's really more comments than questions, but but I wanted to just echo that about Jonathan um, and the administrative team for for recognizing and and for our community helping us, you know, see how how important it was to focus on this as a piece of something that is at the core of what we are doing here. And so, I mean, it, it is important unto itself, but it's also a part of the core of the other things that we're doing. We talk about personalized learning. We talk about kids wanting to feel safe and safe, welcomed, valued um, as learners here. Mm -hmm. You can't do that unless you understand what their experience is as a human being and can empathize with that experience and, and live in that experience with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and thanks to the administrative team for, for, for being humble enough to know that we, we didn't have the tools to be able to just kind of figure this out on our own. 
Um, and so it's, it's great that we've um, enlisted Tommy's help. And uh, I mean, from everything we've seen, um, you've been knocking it out of the park and we appreciate um, what you're doing for us, for sure. So again, no questions, but <laughs> just excitement and, and uh, an enthusiastic thumbs up from us. Normally we have backpacks to give them, don't we? <laughs> yeah. We do. <laughs> Could I just make one comment really quickly? I just, um, and I, thank you for even just recognizing, but I, I have to recognize the team. These things don't happen. Jonathan is one person that runs around, and thank you, but our team with Heather and Todd and Sean and Tracy and the rest of the executive team, Pulling this off is not easy. There's a lot of logistics when you say we're going to train all. Anytime we say all, it takes a lot of work and a lot of logistics behind the scenes. So I just want to recognize all the players involved and Lena Patel right here just doing the great work that she's doing to help us stay on target as our uh, project manager and all of our administrators. This has not happened without our principals. There are three words that just came to mind as I was listening. One is this idea of a spirit of humility. There's definitely a spirit of humility, and Tommy has taught us that, and our teachers have embraced that, and it's been great to see that. And then there's a posture of healing and hope, and I think that's something that I've really taken away from the training, but also conversations listening to Amy talk tonight and Eric talk about their staff. There is a excitement about the work and moving forward for our students' sake. So I just had to, yeah, I couldn't be quiet, I'm sorry. No, that's that's awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jonathan.